it's almost kind of sad, guys. We're about, we're over halfway done, you know, with the three fourths, fifths of the way through, through the 2019 open season. And honestly, we're kind of three fifths of the way through the open and regional season combined, considering RIP regionals, RIP. All right, let's get started. We're here to talk about 19.4. <clears throat> First of all, what's 19.4? We, <coughs> I ate a piece of toast really fast and like five minutes ago. Gosh. All right, what's 19.4? We've got a 12 minute time cap, okay? Three rounds of 10 snatches at 95, 65, and 12 bar facing burpees, okay? We have a three minute rest, mandatory rest, and then three rounds of 10 bar muscle ups, and 12 bar facing burpees, okay? So that's the general workout. So um, honestly, it's the first time that CrossFit Games has ever posted a legitimate specified rest. We have had rest to a certain point in the past, like, you know, uh, the one year we had overhead squat and chest bar pull-ups and you had to rest until the three minute mark in order to start the next part. But this is the first time we've had an actual given amount of rest no matter who you are. Okay, so first of all, in case you guys didn't know, these are not two separately scored events. I had to actually check that on the night it came out because the guys announcing it didn't say whether it was or wasn't. These, the whole workout is for total time, okay? So bear that in mind because if this workout was two separately scored events, meaning event one and event two, it'd be a whole lot different when you look at it and how you approach event one. So because it's total time, we're gonna approach one event one a little bit differently than if it was both scored events. So let's jump into it. First of all, let's just talk about the first workout, right? So let's just talk about this part right here, okay? First part of the workout, again, is three rounds of 10 snatches, Preferably, preferably power snatches and 12 bar facing burpees. The best way to describe this is the meme from Star Wars. It's a trap. It's a trap, ladies and gentlemen. It's a trap. Like every time I've talked about workouts, um, whether it was open workouts or sanctioned event online qualifiers or whatever the case may be, you have to know yourself and what you're capable of. You can't go into a workout and have a higher expectation or a higher idea of what you're capable of, you need to be realistic to yourself, right? So yes, you could come out here and do this workout ham diggity sauce, like just go crazy, like attack it, like there's nothing left in the world. And if this was a separately scored event, two separate scored events, I would recommend that and just then hold on for dear life at the end. But it's not, it's total time. If you attack this and go absolutely crazy, 100% red line, 90, you know, 99.9%, you will die and die hard. For instance, I talked to Chandler Smith this morning. Chandler Smith posted that he did this first three round, this part A in 149. 149, I wanna write that down just so you guys get an idea of that. What's well, a one, a four, and a nine? Okay guys, that is fast. That is really stinking fast. But he also said, it wasn't a good idea. He might have pulled off a 149, so then, you know, now he's starting <clears throat> at uh, what, a 4.49 on the clock, which is a lot faster starting in the workout than the rest of us are, you know, by maybe 20, 30, 40 seconds. But the fact of the matter is, if you're completely blown, <clears throat> it doesn't matter how much time you've given yourself. You need to approach this workout in such a way that you're still capable of doing part B pretty decently. What, the best way to represent that is you should get down with this workout and yes, this workout's gonna suck and yes, it's gonna tire you. But you should get down with this workout and still feel pretty good, okay? You shouldn't get down with this workout and already have Fran cough is a pretty good definition, right? So we each get Fran cough at a certain point in a workout. Mine might be a little better than somebody's, somebody else might be better than mine, but you each get Fran cough. We're all capable of getting it. So you shouldn't have Frankoff or have a completely, you're depleted, your energy is depleted and you're tired at the end of this workout. Cause you still have a very important part of the workout to do. Now, if you don't have bar muscle ups, that's a completely different discussion. If you can't do bar muscle ups at all, then yes, you have, this is your tie break time. You need to focus on that. But we're not talking about those folks or you folks who can't do bar muscle ups. We're talking about the folks that <clears throat> feel comfortable in bar muscle ups, from moderate to really comfortable bar muscle ups, okay? 
So, like I mentioned, approach this workout in such a way that you feel good. Maybe not good, but you don't, you aren't depleted at the end of it, okay? So let's talk about each movement. Snatch, right? So obviously I recommend power snatch, right? You're obviously gonna power snatch, there's no doubt about that, right? You're, the guys last night, I think were doing these snatches in 20 seconds, right? So you're looking at two seconds, okay, right? Two seconds per rep, right? And that's a, that's a pretty good representation. Um, you could power snatch it, um, you can muscle snatch it, which some of the guys were doing muscle snatch last night. I don't thoroughly recommend muscle snatch because it gets you to your back a lot, right? So you depend on your, your rectors and your back a lot, which is fine if we were only doing snatches. You know, if we're doing Randy 75 snatches for time and 75 pounds, I recommend a muscle snatch. It's very fast. But if we're doing burpees, right? So now our erectors might be shot from doing muscle snatches and now we're having to arch at the bottom, you know, push up off the floor and jump over a bar. Your back's going to keep getting attacked and attacked and attacked. So therefore, I don't recommend a muscle snatch. You can do what you want, but I don't recommend it. I kind of, I power snatch them all. Um, so that's what I recommend. I didn't even do a single muscle snatch, I don't believe. So anyways, so power snatch for the snatches. Um, <clears throat> if you want a good time, I recommend going unbroken. But don't feel like you have to go unbroken on the snatches in order to have a good time, right? I've seen people and I've seen scores, whether it was in Midwest made or people I know personally or, or people in the gym that are doing it, that have broken every single round of power snatches up, have broken every single round up because they know the important part is part B. So don't feel like you have to do some broken. If you do it in sets of five and five, right, with a quick reset, you know, you're not walking around chalking up, that's completely fine. Like you don't feel ashamed about it. Um, you should get done with this workout again with your heart rate should be redlining. So therefore, if in order to not redline, you have to break it up in order to feel good about part B, do it. There's no shame in that. Uh, bar facing burpees <clears throat> is in both part A and part B. So this year they changed the rules for bar facing burpees. They added the ability to do a step up to the bar instead of a jump up, right? Um, if you are someone who is really efficient at the step up, meaning you probably have done it in class times a lot, you do it all the time, I'd recommend using it. I know Jake Flown who works out with me, he feels really comfortable doing that. When he was misfit, they practiced it a lot doing step ups and he loves a step up and that's what he did in the workout and he was good at it. So do it. I don't think it's the fastest way to do it, of course. The fastest way is obviously to jump up and spinning in the air and then dropping down and that's what I use and that's pro that's mostly because I don't practice the step up because it was disallowed a year and a half ago. So why even practice it? Um, especially if it's not gonna be allowed in the open um, or at the games and regionals or anything else like that. So I don't practice it, but there's obviously two ways of doing it. Like I mentioned, you can do a step up and you can also do a jump up, okay? This way is obviously faster. This way saves yourself a lot more and is a little more efficient on your breathing and your body and especially on your hip flexors because you can step up instead of having to jump and use that extra energy. So it's totally up to you, faster, more efficient. In terms of saving yourself, it's whatever you want to do. I'll leave it up to you. So that is part A, right? So after you finish part A, you've got a three minute rest, right? So your three minute rest. Take advantage of it. Have some water there. Have a towel there to, you know, you're probably gonna be sweating around your wrist, so make sure you're dry around your hands. Don't do part A with your wrist wraps on. Um, I mean, not your wrist wraps, your gymnastic straps on. It's gonna get in the way. So now is your time for three minutes to put on your gymnastic straps, get prepared, get your mind right. You should already have warmed up your bar muscle ups previously before part A, so don't feel like, please don't try to warm up your bar muscle ups in three minutes. Your three minutes should be spent sitting there, drinking water, joking with some buddies and getting relaxed and ready for the next part of the workout. What is the next part of the workout? <clears throat> We've got three rounds of 10 bar muscle ups and 12 bar facing burpees. So all they really did was sub out the 10 power snatches, 95 pounds with 10 bar muscle ups. Personally, this is the workout. This, I mean, my assumption is you aren't going so slow on part A that it becomes a detriment and you don't have enough time to finish it. But when it comes down to it, your part A time is important. Believe me, it is important. But if I had to uh, priority rank it, man, I would say this workout out is 75 to 80% more important than the other one. This is where your money's made at when it comes to finishing the workout. Assuming you're gonna finish the workout, this is solely and hugely more important, okay? 
You need to approach this workout, <clears throat> hopefully, in such a way that your part A didn't destroy you, didn't deplete you, okay? Because what I found out that my, going into this workout, I felt great. And going into my second round of this workout, it started to hit me hard. So your goal is to, hopefully you don't feel bad in the second round, maybe hopefully it's the third round you feel bad, that way you can push through the second round as hard as you can. So, let's talk about how you should approach it given certain aspects of how you push bar muscle ups, right? So, if you can do 10 bar muscle ups unbroken and you feel great doing bar muscle ups, do them. But my real question is, don't go to failure on bar muscle ups, no matter who you are, right? If you go to, if you go to 10 bar muscle ups because you're like, oh, I can do 10 bar muscle ups, like I'm getting, I'm, I'm so amazing at bar muscle ups, okay, that's great. But you gotta realize, you're gonna come back here two more times. So if you do 10 bar muscle ups, and then come back for your second round and do, you know, five and five, that's still great. But if you come back for your third round and you're doing singles on bar muscle ups because you're completely blown, well my question is, are you blown just because you're tired and your triceps are gone from the bar facing burpees, or are you blown because you spent, you expended so much energy going on broken on the first part? So my, my advice is, Break it up early and often. Don't feel like you, because it's 10, that you have to go unbroken. Again, it's another trap, right? Like, feel free to break up the 10 in such a way that you can keep moving, right? The workout's not about doing large unbroken sets because if you sit, if you do your bar muscle and you spend a lot of time resting at the top, it'd probably be more beneficial to come off the bar and rest at the ground and chalk and shake your arms out than resting at the top of the bar. Therefore, come off the bar. Don't spend that much time doing that, okay? so. Break these up early and often if you need to. I, I'm pretty sure if you approach this workout and, and you felt pretty decent coming in this workout and you did five and five for every round or maybe six and four because you don't want to do the same number every round. So you do six and four for three rounds and you do a quick, a quick, a quick break, a quick chalk break, you know, shake it out and get back on the bar. Kind of like how I preached doing toes the bar for 19.2. And then, of course, when you're done with your fourth rep, you get around right the bar facing burpees. And then, you know, when you're done with your bar facing burpees, you might grab chalk and then go right to your six. Even if you break it up six and four for three rounds, I'm pretty sure you could probably still get a really good time. Like, I'm pretty sure once we watch videos at the end of this, you're gonna see a lot of guys that will break it up. I mean, and they still get great times because they're just being smarter. It's not always about who can go the hardest and who can go the hardest the longest. Sometimes in these workouts, it's who's working the smartest. And in this case, breaking it up is totally fine. Last thing is the bar facing burpees. Honestly, when it gets down to this, you're at the end of this workout. So come your second round, you're gonna wanna slow down those bar facing burpees so much. Don't. There's nothing else that I can tell you other than just don't do it. Your first round, you might do 10 or six and four, and you might get your bar facing burpees in your first round, and you're probably still gonna feel pretty good. It's probably gonna be a pretty good similar rate to what you finish at in part A. But once you come back into your bar muscle ups, you're probably gonna find your triceps are getting blown. And you're gonna get back to the 12 bar facing burpees and you're probably gonna spend a lot of time wasting here. I think honestly when it comes down to it, the most important part of this workout, of this part B workout, and honestly of the full workout, is the second round of bar facing burpees. I wasted a lot of time here. Um, I wasted more time than I should have. Um, why the second round, why is the second round the most important? Well, for one, your first round, you probably still feel good and you're moving at a pretty good click. But your second round, you're probably, you're slowing down. But your third round, you know you're at the end of the workout, so you pick it up to finish it, right? But your second round, you're not at the end of the workout. So you're thinking to yourself, I've still got a set of bar muscle ups, so I'm gonna slow down to give myself a pretty good chance of bar muscle ups. And that might be a good idea if you struggle with bar muscle ups, but don't slow down too much because you'll lose a lot of time here in the second round of bar facing burpees. So I think, like we talked about when we talk about like money rounds, like what's the most important round? 19.2, the most important round in my mind was the 275 because you could waste a lot of time. It was still heavy, but you could still knock it out pretty quick and move forward and gain a lot of time, right? The second round of bar facing burpees is just like that round. It's the money round in my books, right? You could waste a lot of time thinking, oh, I feel bad for myself because I have one more round of bar facing burpees left and waste a lot of time that way. Or you could pick it up and keep a pretty good click. It probably won't be as fast as your first round of this workout, but it probably could be a little bit slower, but still be okay. And you'll make up a lot of time, I think. So my advice to you is on the second round, I know it's gonna suck, okay? But you gotta keep going. And then of course, once we get the final round, once we get the final round, it's just go, right? It's, 
you might be breaking this up into doubles and triples, but you know what? If you gotta break it into doubles and triples, you gotta do it. Like you can't start failing reps because if you start failing reps, you start losing time and you're not accomplishing work. And when it gets to the third round, your bar facing burpees on this, this part B of this workout, there's nothing else to say. Honestly, I feel like I was doing a one rep max bench press every rep. It was hard to get off the floor. It was hard to jump. It was hard to move. I've got people yelling at me, go faster, go faster. And all I can think about is, holy crap, these are the hardest burpees I've ever done in my life. They're gonna be hard. So you just gotta get through it when it comes down to it. Um, that's pretty much it. Honestly, guys, that's really all I have about this workout. You know, real quick to recap. It, it's a fun workout, it's a fast workout. Don't blow out the gate on part A. It's not worth it, right? Part B is the most important part of the workout. And if we delve in a little deeper, the, re the second round of part B, if you make it that far, and if you're good at bar muscle ups, is the most important part of the workout for bar facing burpees because you could waste a lot of time or you could gain a lot of time depending upon how you feel once you approach it. There are a lot of bar facing burpees in this workout. So make sure you warm up your triceps, make sure you warm up your chest, make sure you warm up your shoulder because you're gonna use them and it's gonna be awful. Um, it is a workout you can redo I would not recommend trying to do it twice in a day or trying to like do it once every day you know for three four days in a row I would give it a day's rest in between um, and also if you decide to redo it I would approach it with a different game plan don't approach it with the same game plan thinking you're gonna get different results approach with the game plan of maybe breaking it up earlier breaking it up differently approaching your part a differently maybe slower uh, approaching your part B differently you know maybe attacking the burpees a little bit faster whatever the case may be make sure if you do it again you have a different game plan and hopefully you get a better result Anyways, guys, that's really it. Hope you enjoyed the workout. It's a great workout. I'll probably do it again, maybe on Monday. Ah! If my triceps heal up, we'll see. Anyways, guys, have a great day. We'll talk to you guys later.